How can a 200,000 ton steel monster float on water while the tiny fishing hook sinks in water? Why doesn't it sink like a stone? Why the small fishing hook doesn't float on water? The answer isn't luck. It's engineering, physics, and design, built to fight gravity itself. Real scope. But this idea of floating didn't begin with engines or steel. Thousands of years before the first cargo ship, humans looked at fallen logs drifting down rivers and realized water could carry weight. That moment changed history. The oldest known boats date back over 10,000 years. Then, in the 19th century, iron and steam rewrote the rules, giving birth to the first metal ships. And today, we sail with mega vessels carrying entire cities across the sea, powered by nuclear engines, satellite navigation, and computer-balanced hulls. From the wooden boats and giant sailing ships of the past to the advanced steel giants of today, ships have come a long way. But before we talk about how they evolved, we must first understand one simple question. Why do ships float instead of sinking? Now imagine a ship made of thousands of tons of steel. Steel is heavier than water, right? Then how can it float? The secret lies not in what it's made of, but in how it's shaped. A ship's hull is designed like a giant bowl hollow inside, so it displaces a massive amount of water. That displaced water pushes upward with an equal force called buoyant force. If a ship takes too much cargo, the weight becomes greater than the buoyant force, and it sinks. That's why engineers calculate every ton of cargo, every drop of fuel, every centimeter of hull depth. Even the red paint below the waterline isn't just for looks. It reduces drag and prevents corrosion. But what about the small boats, the rowboats, the canoes, the kayaks? They may look simple, but their shapes are also precisely designed for stability and balance. From carved wooden canoes to carbon fiber racing shells, the principle is identical. Whether it's a steel ship or a tiny boat, the law is the same, Archimedes' principle. It's a balance between density and displacement. When the weight of the object equals the water it moves aside, it floats. It's not magic, it's physics that keeps everything afloat. Modern shipbuilders use supercomputers to simulate water flow and hull curvature. Even a few degrees of shape change can save millions in fuel. And small boat designers test new materials, aluminum, composites, 3D printed hulls, to perfect buoyancy. From ancient wooden canoes to nuclear-powered ships, both are proof that humans learn to work with water, not against it. One carries nations across oceans. The other carries a single person chasing freedom. What amazed you most, the small boats or the massive ships? Comment below and tell me. If you love discovering the hidden science behind everyday wonders, subscribe. Next time, we'll explore why airplanes float in the sky.